So do we pick again? No. <laughs> uh, Chuck Carucci won, and uh, he turned it all back into the Hall of Fame. Right. Chuck, thank you very much. Not that it was fixed or anything. Right. Chris, you can put that sign down. I'm paying no attention to it. All right. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is um, perhaps my favorite part of the evening when I get a chance to introduce our Master of Ceremonies, whom I've known since elementary school at Bachelor School along with the rest of his family. And I think it's fair to say this would be a great comparison to talk about Sean's career very much like a baseball player, but not the baseball player who gets a $5 million bonus out of high school or college and then is in the major leagues in a year or a year and a half. Uh, I'm going to take a, a couple of moments to, to, uh, to talk about the baseball player who starts off in A ball, you know, short season at Lowell and moves through low A and high A and Portland and Pawtucket and finally makes it to the, the bigs, the show. No, Rusty, not you. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go literally right through uh, his career. It'll take a couple of minutes, but I think it's well worth it. This is our third induction ceremonies. I think I might have mentioned earlier. I don't remember now. And um, he's been at all three of them without compensation. Uh, we offered him expenses, and he refused. It was like five bucks, but uh, he, he still refused. I mean, his cab fare in New York was five bucks before he came down as a pop and steers, but uh, he refused to take any compensation for it. Now, it started with, believe it or not, when he was in high school covering our games for the transcript at Boston, when he attended Boston College. Did you graduate? Yeah, okay. Just um, when he attended Boston twice. <laughs> When he attended Boston College, he covered school sports for the Globe, came back, did our games on cable, then went to the Cape, and I'd, I'd love to describe it in detail, but I know I'm on the clock, Chuck. Um, but he had two activities. One was to commute to the Cape every day, do a cable show, bring it back to the station, edit it, whatever, and present it. And in his off hours, he worked on the loading docks on Concord Street, the, the trucks, loading the trucks. So uh, talk about paying your dues. And finally, uh, he was in uh, left sports, got into news, did radio at Leesburg, Virginia. So we're talking short season. And then uh, TV in Sioux City, Iowa, Iowa, home of the University of Iowa Hawkeyes. Um, and then he moved up to high A ball at Roanoke, Virginia. Then he started hitting the larger uh, metropolitan areas of the United States. Charlotte, North Carolina. Columbus, Ohio. Came back to New England in uh, Providence. Did you cover the CNC uh, thing? Yeah, OK. Um, then came home to Boston 10 years at Channel 7. And then finally the major, not to say Boston isn't the major leagues, but that would be like Kansas City in the American League. And then he became a Yankee or a, a Tampa Bay now um, in uh, New York, the largest market in the country, the world, the planet, whatever, and uh, WCBS in New York. In addition to that, it's in the uh, program. Um, Sean and I have a lot in common, actually, in this regard. Sean ran... Uh, 12 Boston marathons and I ran none, okay? <laughs> but it's kind of the same. Uh, two, two Ironman triathlons, you gotta be a little nuts, but uh, swimming, biking, and running. And we've got some great news. He met his um, wife at the uh, station in New York and um, they are now expecting a child in August. Yeah! Nicole, get him out of here. Uh, uh, in August, which coincidentally is the month I was born. So I'm thinking like maybe Barry Kipnis Hennessy, you know. It's got a ring to it. All right. 
Uh, folks, I think you've uh, had about enough. My act is worn thin for this year, and uh, I'm sure they'll elect someone else after tonight. So I thank you for your attention, and uh, I'm going to call up Sean Hennessy for, for someone who actually knows what to do with a microphone. Okay? <laughs> Sign of the times, getting old. Got to put the cheaters on, or as my friends call it, the, bang, the Ben Franklins. Um, Coach, K, K, Coach K, thank you very much. It's nice to see that the third time's the charm. Usually when I'm introduced, they go uh, a long diet to our tribe about how, how much of a great athlete in high school I was, which, if anyone knows my career in high school, I was uh, the eternal bench warmer. I guess if you talk about record keeping and writing, maybe I did okay, but uh, high school athletics was not my thing. My brothers were great, and I was so proud of them, but... Um, I was, a, I was a bench guy, I just wanted to participate in any way I could, and uh, I did it the best I could. But uh, just like tonight, um, I'm participating the best way I can and, and uh, helping the Hall of Fame committee, and I'm happy to be here, honored to be here, really am. Coach K mentioned that uh, my wife and I are expecting, if, if, if you've been an expectant dad or expectant mom, you know that people find out you're pregnant and they ask, you know, what, what do you have for names? But we don't have a name yet. So people feel inclined to give us some names. And so we've gotten some pretty unique names suggested to us. Uh, we get, what Vivian, what would we get? Uh, Henrietta, which is a nice name, but Henrietta Hennessy may not work so well. We've gotten Hamish Hennessy. Some of the names, um, you know, not so, not so working so well. But Coach K suggests that maybe we do Barry Kipnis Hennessy this week. And that, uh, uh, Coach K, I, I love you, but that's not going to happen, I don't think. <laughs> um, but in any event, uh, tonight we are uh, honored to, uh, to be here to uh, recognize some, some really truly wonderful athletes and wonderful community uh, activists and community service people who have really done so much for North Reading. We're going to begin tonight with the 1974 State Championship Baseball Team. Uh, this was the, I guess from what I've been told, this is the Cinderella team, the little team that could. This is the team that was said to be rebuilding, and they, uh, they had a heck of a team. The Boston Globe called them the tiny team with heart. Back in 74, they ran through the Division II playoff field, did very well, but because of the way the playoffs were formatted that year, they had to take on a Division I team in the state title game, and they ended up taking on this behemoth called Pittsfield. No one gave much of a chance, but on that day, they were the Cinderella team. They ended up winning 2-1, to one, finishing with a 23-3 and three record, and that was their third state title uh, in the school history. So tonight we honor the 74 baseball team. We want to call them up one by one to come up and get some awards. Of course, they were coached by Frank Carey. So let's begin with these uh, team members. Uh, Tom Luoto, Bob Terranova, Scott Orlosk, Greg Stewart, co-captain Jim Davis, co-captain Jim Leach, Steve Hardery, Bill Canavan, Chuck Barkhouse, Peter Mastro, Mike Brennan, who's not here tonight, he's working in Dubai, Mark Zerowell, Ricky Ward, Bob Legro, and Joe Gleason, and of course they were coached by Frank Carey. So, ladies and gentlemen, the 1974 <laughs> North Carolina baseball team. I thought Coach Carey was going to be good He was? I thought that's what yeah. I don't care, whatever you want. Why don't you just give him the trophy? Why don't you just give him the trophy? Why don't you just give him the trophy? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Jimmy, you guys are... Yeah, well, that's good. Great here, right? You guys are saying a few words. You guys are saying a few words. Come on, Hank. Just pass him up to me, Scott. Pass him up. I'll pass him up. Okay. No, you know what? They're going to say a few words. Yeah, we're going to say a couple words first. My name is Tim Davis. Uh, Co-captain along with with Hank Leach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta get close to that Okay. Can everybody hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Get right up to it. Get right up close. How's that? <laughs> All right. 
I'm not that comfortable with the microphone. <laughs> but what Hank and I were the co-captains that, that year, uh, two seniors. But actually, I'd like to have two other people stand up with us because the core of that team, as uh, had mentioned, was that this was actually supposedly a rebuilding year. It was a, the year before when Hank and I and, and Stevie and Greg were juniors, we had seven starters that were seniors, and we went a long way in the playoffs there, and there was, we were supposed to win the championship that year, but we were unsuccessful. Uh, so it was really a rebuilding year. We had all these young whippersnappers coming up behind us to support us four guys, but we were kind of sort of the in-between year while, while these guys were grooming for, to be the champions next year. Uh, Greg, why don't you come up? And also, Stevie, come stand with us. Because believe it or not, I'm... I'm the guy that is, was known as sort of the reserved person that was kind of shy, didn't talk much. And these other three guys, no. they're dying to get at this microphone, I can no. tell you right now. No. <laughs> so we're going to let them. I know this, this could turn into a long night, but you got three wonderful guys that, that I got to play ball with through four years of high school. Uh, two, of, two, of us, two of the guys played hockey in the winter, two played basketball, but in the springtime we all came together to play baseball, and it was a wonderful experience. But before I give up the microphone, the one thing that's, that's special for me and I think for all the guys here is that our team, being a part of Coach Carey's legacy over all these years of what he has done with North Reading and with baseball in general and all the things he does over in Lynn with his hometown, you know, how many people he has affected from what he has instilled because what he's taken is base, the, the sport of baseball, but what he's done is take, transferred the discipline that, you, that is instilled in baseball and conveyed that to all of us. I think to a man, we're all successful because of the, the things that we learn through Coach Carey over the years. So I'd like to just a big, big hug and a thank you to, to Coach Carey. <laughs> And just one other thing I'd like to, because, you know, a lot of people did say that we were kind of lucky to do what we did, but just to give one example of what he did, again, the discipline, the practice hours, the preparation, again, the, one of the life experiences of preparation was drilling practices every day so that when things happen in a, game, in a ball game, they just happened. And one example I just want to give was in a playoff game down in Brandeis where the way that we had, we were lucky is that year, we had two superb shortstops. One of them happened to be playing second base. So Scott and, and Mark were great shortstops. But the one example is because of the way Coach Carey one practiced us and also positioned people, we had a guy in right field. Jimmy Leach here, who had the arm of a Johnny Damon. <laughs> we had a second baseman, Mark Zerowell, who had the arm of Dwight Evans, if anyone remembers the, the right fielder from the 70s. And the other team, the guy got a base hit, and a guy went tried to go from first to third because they had scouted and they thought they were pretty smart because they had seen Jimmy in warm-ups out there in right field, right? So the play develops, the guy hits the ball to right field, the guy's going from first to third, and what Mark, in the way that we did the, the cutoffs was, he went out just a little further than the usual second baseman when you're doing a cutoff from the outfielder. So Jimmy picks the ball up quick, gets it to Mark Zerowell, who throws a perfect strike to me at third base, and I'm just, I'm in my lounge chair waiting for this guy to arrive at third base to put the tag. And it was another one of those close games, but it was the preparation that, that happened that allowed us to win games like that, so that all these close games against these larger schools that year, it, it was no secret to me the, well, why we won. So thank you very much, guys. Right. Hey, can we give you this? Mine's a little mine's a little bit more structured. I wrote mine out. <laughs> <laughs>